And now I'd like to take a look at some new technology from Epic Games and some of our really close partners. Um, and to walk you through this, I'd like to introduce Kim LeBerry, CTO of Epic Games. Thank you, Tim. OK. Um, for Paragon, we knew we wanted to make really believable characters. And everybody knows, you know, we did the kite demo last year, that we have pretty incredible rendering capabilities in the engine, but we wanted to go further. We wanted to produce characters as believable as this guy, Twin Blast, with incredible detail and great looking skin and hair and eyes. So the first thing that we did was um, we decided that we really wanted to do this the right way. So we took actors. Um, to, uh, to our friends at Otoy, where we had light stage scans done and calibrated their skin and eyes to match exactly reference photography. Um, we also needed to make cloth that was more believable. So through numerous photographic shoots of little bits of leather and cloth and all the pieces that we need to make costumes, we were able to come up with some really good, nice base shaders. Um, skin, as I said earlier, light stage data was our source material, but also real world photography. Um, you know, light stages, you get a very technical data set, but you have to interpret that within the constraints of a game engine. So we have better pore detail, better subsurface scattering, um, even now deformable uh, blend shapes. So if you've got a character that needs to animate and talk, you get much higher fidelity in, uh, in Unreal Engine 4. Hair, we wanted hair that was convincing. Now, we can't render millions and millions of strands per frame in a real game, um, so we decided to, to do a card-based approach, but we made sure that the shader was able to do anisotropic reflections perfectly, and it even reacts to backscatter, so you can get a shot like this where the light is transmitting through the hair. For our eyes, uh, we did a lot of um, detailed close-up photography of, uh, of actresses, and, uh, and actors as well, um, and made sure that the uh, refraction and reflection were perfectly calibrated. And we even have a dynamic pupil in there that you can, um, you can keyframe and animate based on the emotion that you're trying to convey with the character. There's a wider shot showing it all. Anyway, so when we do this, we did this for Paragon, but it's Unreal Engine. So everything that we do is available almost immediately to our, to our uh, developers. So uh, we thought we'd do a little experiment, and I want to introduce one of our good friends, Tamim Antionardis from Ninja Theory, who's going to talk about a little co collaboration we've had over the last seven weeks. Yeah. Um, uh, and I'll leave it with you. There you go. Thank you. Good to see you. <laughs> Thank you. So the Hellblade team is a pretty small team with 16 people, but um, Ninja Theory has always been about characters, and we wanted to push our character for Hellblade, Senua, as, as far as we ever have, uh, or, or as far as we could, really. And so we teamed up with uh, our good friends at Epic and uh, uh, Three Lateral, who have amazing face scanning and uh, face rigging technology. Uh, but also Cubic Motion, who have an amazing uh, facial solving solution. And the reason we're pushing for believability is because we are tackling some difficult themes in the game. Senua, who you see here, she's a Celtic warrior, and she's on a vision quest into the Viking heartland. But she's struggling with severe psychosis and trauma. And so it's very important for us to represent the, the physical, the mental, and the emotional trials of her journey as believably as possible. Um, <clears throat> and so we have been working very hard on, on, on this new character and her characterization. Uh, we're backed by the Wellcome Trust. We've been working with a professor of neuroscience and health neuroscience and psychiatry for the past year and a half. And very importantly, we've also been working with a lot of people that have direct lived experience of voice hearing and visions. So we've prepared this scene to reveal our new version of Senua. And if you watch very, very closely, you'll notice that there's something strangely alive about her. So action. into words. The 
a moment when you look into the eyes of the one who is supposed to reassure you, make you feel safe. It only takes an instant. Fear swallows you before you have a chance to make sense of it. And darkness becomes a part of who you are. Her world changed that day when the Northman took him from her. Senua knows that there is no going back to how things were, that there is nothing to go back to at all. Their gods can see into your mind. They will use this power to destroy you. They won't stop me. I can still feel it. Whatever's left of him, they will never let him go. I'm not gonna let him rot here. You're the one rotting here. Alone. You will die here. No. And all your suffering will no. be for nothing. Shut up! <laughs> so if you look on that side of the stage, you'll see that Melina, our actress, has just performed the entire scene live in real time from within the Hell Hellblade world. Quiet! <laughs> so this is a pretty amazing technology. Um, it meant that as a director, I could set up the scene and have full control over things like lighting and cameras and VFX. So if I want to add fire to the scene, I can just go, let there be fire, and boom. Whoa, 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 turn that off, turn that off. <laughs> and then and the power of this means that we can tune the performance to the scene without having to see a green, without any green screen in sight. It's pretty incredible stuff. And so this has a lot of uh, implications for things like uh, previs, you know, for games, but also previs for movies. Uh, so if you imagine something like animated movies especially, they normally take hours and hours to render a single scene. Melina, no. We talked about this. Go on then, just a bit more. Do you want to build a snowman? <laughs> I don't play. Beautiful singing voice, beautiful, beautiful. So, but I don't think previs is the end goal. I mean, previs is incredibly useful and immediate use for this technology, but with the quality of graphics, lighting, characterization we've got here, I don't see why you can't create entire productions virtually with virtual humans right now. And you don't need big warehouses like Universal Studios. This is stuff you can do in your own studio or at home. So that's pretty amazing. But one other thing that I think is incredible is when you're actually in virtual reality facing a digital human and you're looking into the eyes of this character, it really puts you there. You believe that that person is real. And so whether we do this through human-controlled digital humans or in future AI-driven digital humans, it's, it's, it feels like we're one step closer to the future we imagined. So with that, uh, I'd like to just say, uh, Melina, it's the first time she's performed live in front of an audience, so that's pretty amazing. How, Melina, how do you feel about it now? Um, <laughs> I'm glad it's over. <laughs> All right, well, we'll have a beer later, eh? Yeah. All right, cool. <laughs> so with that, thank you very much. Thanks so much, Tamim. Thanks, Mel. Thanks, Tamim. Thank